Good afternoon, everybody. I think it is now well into the afternoon, officially. Um, my name is Leo Donovan. I'm from Harwood Hutton Accountancy Firm, based down in Beaconsfield, South Bucks. We've also got offices in London. Um, your sheets might show Jerry Mighton as the speaker today. I apologise for that. Uh, Jerry decided to sub me in his place. He's got some personal issues. Uh, Jerry is a rather large, jovial Irishman. Uh, I'm a rather stoic Southerner. Uh, a bit of a difference of approach, but hopefully we can get the information across to you uh, in relation to our chosen topic that we're delivering today. I'd like to thank CML for the opportunity to speak and for Amelia for organising that for me. And um, yeah, hopefully you can take something away from this. It's obviously a short segment, but uh, if it allows you to get a little bit of insight into various matters, we can always discuss afterwards uh, on a one-to-one -one basis, and if we can assist in any way, we'd be more than happy to do so. Um, obviously, it is a short topic, uh, or a short session for the topic. It will be crammed in, as some of my uh, other speakers have said. Um, also, some of the things that I would have been speaking about have already been mentioned, so I will touch on them, but uh, uh, perhaps if we can reserve them for afterwards. So, the reality of Brexit... Uh, we won't cover what's happened previously since that fateful day when the uh, referendum was held, but basically where are we now? UK will be exiting the customs union single market. Uh, I think it almost goes without saying that this is going to happen, uh, irrespective of a, a, a hard exit, a soft exit, uh, etc. It's unlikely, or it's looking unlikely, that we will remain within the, within the union and access to the single market. A free trade agreement is more likely what's going to happen. Um, in some fashion, there will need to be a border between the UK and the EU. And there's been a lot of talk about this um, and the rhetoric around particularly the, the Irish problem. Uh, the EU will not stand for having no physical border between the EU and the UK. There will have to be something there, whether it's a system compliance type approach using technology, as, as the government are announcing, well, remains to be seen. Um, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. We will be looking at the very harsh reality of having VAT on imports, and I'll come on a little more to that in a moment, but at some point VAT will be have to be declared on imports coming into the UK from the EU. Now that's obviously very new to a lot of businesses. If you're a business that's only ever traded with the European Union, and is estimated to be about 180,000 or so, uh, according to HMRC, and that's purely based on VAT return data. Um, the figure is actually likely to be far higher than that, because there are a lot of businesses that, smaller businesses that aren't VAT registered that perhaps trade with the EU, and also a number of businesses that deal in second-hand goods that would not be recorded on a VAT return for EU movement. So the figure is far likely to be higher than the 180,000. If you're one of those businesses, then you are going to be impacted on this in some way, shape or form when it comes to doing your VAT return, possibly cash flow issues. A lot of people have been talking about customs duties and tariffs, obviously a potential impactor. Uh, the orderly withdrawal of ourselves from the EU withdrawal bill and insertion into UK VAT law. It will be business as normal. People were hoping maybe... Right, that's VAT done with now that we're out of the EU, not on your Nelly. That will stay there. It's too big a, uh, too big a financial um, uh, input for the uh, UK government. It's the second largest tax collection um, doctrine within the UK and it will carry on. Um, we are fully expecting it to be redefined though as we move forwards in time post-Brexit. Uh, the and the, the method of insertion into UK law was via the cross Border Trade Bill and the Trade Bill proposals which have moved on since these slides were uh, first brought up. So VAT issues from an importing point of view. Basically your acquisitions and your dispatches are gone. So anyone that just puts them in their box two, box four claim and then puts them in box eight and nine on their VAT return, nil net, no effect. That, that lovely non-cash flow nil net item is disappeared basically. Imports will now have VAT levied as long as it's not a zero rated item that's coming into the UK. Effectively we're reverting back to pre-1992. Um, which uh, at that point when we adopted the acquisitions and dispatches type methodology, prior to that we didn't, we didn't have that in place. Um, so we, we're going backwards in time here in many respects. The VAT returns will change. So where are we now in terms of today? <coughs> so a, a typical VAT return today could look something like this. You'd have VAT on your sales, acquisition tax, total sales VATs to declare, your purchases, which would include your acquisition tax, the net tax payable to HMRC, your net sales, net purchases, sales to EU customers, purchase from EU suppliers. It's all straightforward. People have accounting software and systems that does this all for them. What will a return look like post-Brexit? Good question. We're not entirely sure, but it could look like something how it used to look years ago. Uh, in fact, a five-box VAT return. You'd have your VAT on your sales, your VAT on your purchases, your VAT payable to HMRC, and then simply your net sales and your net purchases. It sounds great in principle, maybe we'll go back that way. 
as an ex-HMRC VAT inspector for many years um, and understanding the methodology of approach they like to take, I very much doubt we will get a five box VAT return going forwards. If anything, it's likely to increase. <coughs> we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So in essence, we have no acquisitions anymore, uh, no dispatches, no European sales list to do. So that's good news for some people. And more importantly for others, no interest at, which is a real bugbear for many businesses, either on uh, declarations of goods going outwards or coming inwards. However, this will lead to VAT on import, C79s and import VAT, possible cash flow issues, or as other speakers have touched onto, what's been referred to as postponed VAT accounting. Um, HMRC via the government have announced that in the event of a hard Brexit, postponed accounting will be introduced. And not only will it be introduced for EU movements of goods coming in, it will actually be unilaterally imposed upon all imports from EU and non-EU destinations. It sounds great. Uh, it's a brilliant cash flow system for businesses. Um, the worry of having to pay that up front or using your duty deferment account playing 15 days after month end uh, of the goods coming in, that 20% could really have hurt the cash flow on many, many businesses. However, postponed accounting would solve that issue. Um, from my experience, um, going back in time, postponed accounting, though, is what we often refer to on the VAT side as the cheats charter. If you think about it logically, you've got goods turning up at a border and no one is collecting that import VAT. It is open to abuse and systematic fraud, which is why we got rid of it in the first place. And now they're talking about going back to it. It's a political issue, and I can see why they've done it or why they're suggesting we do it. It's, it's driven by business, Britain being open for business, to try and help businesses, particularly smaller and mid-sized businesses, and that's why it's going to be brought in. How long it stays, though, we'll have to wait and see in the event of a hard Brexit. Interestingly, the technical briefing that was mentioned that was issued did not mention postponed accounting in the event that we do have some sort of deal. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Unfortunately, there are, are many questions and, and very few answers forthcoming. Questions just lead to more questions and we simply have to wait and see how that progresses. Businesses, many have deferment accounts already to try and mitigate the effects of cash flow for import VAT. Some use simplified import VAT accounting. These are the sort of things that we've been working on with our clients over the last sort of 18 months or so. Having CEVA approvals done with HMRC to reduce your deferment guarantee waivers. Um, and or just getting your own deferment account which many businesses don't have to aid cash flow. All of this might be a moot point now. If postponed accounting comes in, the necess necessity for something like SIVA and the firm account almost go away. Um, but we just don't know. It's not just imports, as has been said, that will create issues. Exports from a VAT point of view also. You have VAT coming in and goods coming into the UK. It used to be acquisitions, obviously now are imports, but goods going out as dispatches will now be exports. Everyone now is effectively a third country. So. VAT going on goods going, it has been mentioned, VAT going on goods into the EU with potential duty tariffs. Who will be the importer of record in those destinations, the supplier or the customer? You need to review terms and conditions as to what these say. As was mentioned earlier, DDP, delivered duty paid. Who is responsible for that duty, potentially in the event of a no deal, when the goods rock up at your customer's door? Is the customer going to bear the brunt of that? Are you going to bear the brunt of it? Are you going to split the difference? What do your terms and conditions say? These are all things that businesses need to be thinking about going forwards. Pointing a tax representative is not the silliest idea. It could cost a little initially in terms of outlay. However, in the longer run, in terms of if you're a business that does trade extensively with Europe, it's something you should really consider. Another issue which is on the horizon for the EU, and once we're technically out of it, we're out of it, something called certified taxable person. There's a lot of VAT changes going on within the UK, uh, but also within the EU as a whole. Um, they've recently uh, announced that they're going to bring in certified taxable person by 2022, I think it is, uh, which basically means that the cross-border trade of goods through VAT registered businesses throughout Europe is changing as well. The sort of traditional approach to acquisitions and dispatches within the EU itself is fundamentally changing. Certified taxable persons, they, uh, the reform bill was October 2017. They're going to introduce simplification measures for call-off stocks and chain transactions throughout Europe and intercommunity supplies. But we won't be in the club, so this won't apply to us in theory. But if you are a business that sends goods into a branch or a limited company in one of those countries, this is something that you'll also need to be thinking about in the beyond horizon of Brexit. 
how it will work in, in, in a nutshell is that if you're a company in, I don't know, France and you're selling goods to uh, a company in Germany, you would effectively charge the German VAT rate, not the French VAT rate. Uh, and, and that is causing sort of a little bit of consternation as to how all the mechanics will work on that, unless you're dealing with a certified taxable person, which is effectively a registration scheme for your customer uh, to allow them to treat it or carry on treating it as a reverse charge purchase effectively. But if they don't have taxable per certified taxable person status, they don't get the reverse charge, you must charge that up front. This is an anti-fraud combat measure. Some of you may have heard the expression MTech fraud. Um, it is wide scale through the EU and has been, for including the UK, for many, many years. It is estimated to contribute to at least 30% of the VAT tax gap uh, in the billions, if not tens or hundreds of billions even. Uh, and this is an attempt to try and uh, sort of tend the, tend the tide on that a little bit. Conditions for CTP must have a fixed establishment in the EU, intercommunity trade, no previous infringements, good level of control and operations uh, in your business um, and day-to-day -day affairs, financial solvency. Somebody mentioned AEO, a gentleman here mentioned AEO earlier. AEO status, if you have that, you will automatically qualify for CTP status. And the, the representative bodies in the countries can refuse CTP, which could leave your supply chain decimated effectively. Um, it will certainly make life more interesting from a VAT point of view and having to charge VAT and declare it to relevant authorities through VAT returns. Once we exit the EU from a VAT point of view, we lose a host of facilities and measures that we enjoy at the moment to make life simple. Distance selling, smaller businesses that can sell into Europe and just account for the sale on their UK VAT return. Once we're out of Europe, we're out of that club. So if you are uh, selling goods into customers in the EU, or private individuals, I should say, um, you simply account for the sale on your UK VAT return. Uh, they have thresholds in those countries above which you trade, then you have to register in those territories. Generally 35 or 100,000 euros, depending on the member state concerned. As I said, we'll lose access to this once we leave the EU. And it's estimated, rough conservative estimated, to have to then register in those territories to account for that on your sales. You could be looking up to 8,000 euros per country, effectively, per annum. Micro businesses currently trading below the VAT threshold can enjoy this at the moment, but once we leave, they will also be caught up in this. So the whole form of being not VAT registered because you're too small might be great within the UK, and we had the announcement in the budget this week that the VAT registration limit is staying the same for a couple of years, but that won't help you when it comes to selling into Europe. You're an import or an exporter into the, your, into the European customer, they're importing from anyone, it doesn't matter if they're VAT registered or not, so the same rules will apply. We have something called the VAT Mini One Stop Shop, which probably some of you aren't familiar with, but it's for business to customer digital services, and it allows businesses in the UK um, to account for VAT on sales of digital download in the country where it's actually enjoyed by the consumer. Um, it's saved having to register in each and every member state. Unfortunately, though, once we leave the EU, this simplification measure goes as well. So you would end up having to potentially register in each member state where you're making these supplies. And the other side to this is because this tax has already been declared for a VAT return, each and every member state knows all these businesses already. There's no hiding. The VAT refund scheme, the EU electronic VAT refund scheme, currently an electronic system, we will no longer be able to use it. We are no longer in the EU. We will have to claim what they call an old 13th directive claim, which would be a paper-based system, translated into the language of the country that you're looking to claim, cost more money, another thing that we lose. Post-Brexit, what could happen? The government have already announced intentions through the uh, OTS, Office Tax Simplification, to review matters on the VAT side. They're going to look at it as an opportunity to try and simplify things. We have a lot, of, a lot of anomalies within the VAT system, whereby depending on the flavour of your milkshake, you will pay VAT or not. Whereas depending on something's heated up in a shop, depending whether you'll pay VAT or not, um, in terms of food. Th there are a host of unusual VAT quirks. Um, it's, it's, it was famously described by John Schwartz when he sat down to hear a VAT case and, and said, ah, oh, VAT case, splendid. It's, uh, VAT is a tax where the laws of reality are inverted and suspended. Uh, it's something of a fiscal theme park, and that does hold true. VAT is uh, a tax that should be simple. It started off when we joined the EU and the VAT regulations sort of being one A4 folder. 
if you now spread out the books regarding that law, um, there probably aren't enough tables in here to actually hold them all, to be honest, for all the various countries. So they will certainly look to simplify that matters within the UK and they'll look at the opportunity to do that. They could potentially widen zero rating and reduce rating, bring things in line with possibly um, areas to do with uh, political policy, which, which may appease people. Conversely, they may use it as an opportunity to raise revenues by seeking to tax items that previously weren't. The one that worries us most is the ability to uh, revisit previous VAT disputes. Uh, under, under current EU law, a lot of VAT cases that have large impact end up at the ECJ and a decision is made that is then ratifying upon all countries, including the UK. Um, we've had many, many VAT disputes that have gone, some in the favour of the taxpayer, some in the favour of the HMRC. Um, there is a, a worry, if you like, in the fullness of time that HMRC will take the opportunity that we're no longer bound by the shackles of the ECJ. They will probably test the water with VAT cases and we could find ourselves going back over old ground where they were unsuccessful first time round, whereas now they don't have a law court that they have to refer on to and they can make the decision themselves. Um, that is a double-edged sword because also advisors might choose to do the same thing the other way, um, but it will very much be driven by a supply and demand kind of approach as to how things progress. Um, I know we said about questions coming into session, if there's anything quickly I'd be happy to answer. Failing that we wait to the, the break. Uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, hopefully if there is anything more detail that you've got please uh, <coughs> Seek me out afterwards and I'll see if I can assist. Thank you.